Hey, it's the podcast guy. Something I talked on on podcast. It's the Something Podcast. And there it is. Sutton United at the GM Boxall Conference have put down first division Coventry City. Winners of the FA Cup themselves less than two years ago. And what a moment to enjoy for the fans of this Surrey side. They've had their moments before, but never won like this. But the whistle goes down. You like the Sun United. Sutton United the National League are through to the last 16 of the FA Cup. No longer English football's perennial non-league club. A 123-year crescendo reaches a new peak for Sutton United, who are promoted to the Football League for the first time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sutton United Talk Time on podcast, the Sutton Podcast. I'm your host Mike and joining me on today's panel we've got Paul, Claire and Joe and we're going to be talking about the uh, win over Doncaster and we're going to look forward to our trip to Newport on Saturday. Don't forget as always you can help with costs to support the show with one-off donations or regular subscriptions by joining us on Patreon. If you want to know more look for the supporters page on the website which is suttonpodcast.com, blah blah blah, you know all the rest of it. Um, thanks to everyone who's doing it and um Bolt's interview was on there for the last couple of days, week or so, and it will be going live this week for general release. So that should, I can't remember if I've done that for Tuesday or Wednesday, but one or the other, it'll be out. Um, we're going to get the panel's thoughts, and we're going to start off with someone who hasn't been on the show for a little while. I'm sure he'll explain why it's been a little while. Um, it's been about four mu- three months, Paul, since you were on, which was just after the Rochdale game, and that was the start of our upturn in form. You were supposed to be on a couple of weeks back. Um but how have you been, Paul? How, what <laughs> yeah, life's a little bit mad at the minute. Um, doesn't seem to get a spare hour. I seem to be working seven days a week. And I agreed I would go and come on for the Harrogate game, not realising it was an away game <laughs> that I couldn't make. So, yeah, it, it worked quite well. I think you said you had three guests that week. So yeah. I think it was uh, like two days before you went. You had two wait, in it. Yeah, wait, is it a away game? <laughs> yeah, it um, didn't go well that. So it has been a little while since you won, um, and we've people have not been on for a, a little while as a cut-off point. I'm just asking people just to remind us who they are and um, kind of their, their little Sutton United history. So just to let, remind everyone a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I just said your Sutton United history. That was pointless. Um, hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've been coming along to Sutton for over, just over 30 years, um, seeing plenty of ups and downs. Uh, obviously, what's happening in a minute is amazing and seeing some very good players, so trying to work um, on the uh, Saturday Night 11 players has, uh, has been a bit of a task, to be honest with you. But, yeah, um, as I say, over 30 years coming and uh, and loving it. Part of the family, great community of people, and uh, I can't see me ever leaving. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. And next, we will move on to Claire. Hello, Claire. Hi. Now, you were on the 100th show a few weeks back. I was, which was uh, devoid of all technical difficulties. You did an impression of me. Did I? Hello, welcome to Sutton Podcast. <laughs> I think you win. I think, standard, sure. I think that's my standard impression of everybody when I'm talking about them behind their back, so it's fine. <laughs> Except it wasn't because it was going out live to everyone. <laughs> I used it. Um, anyway, how have you been? Yeah, good, thank you. Very, very yes. busy. Lots going on. Uh, juggling, obviously, a, a full-time job as well as uh, SLO life, which is uh, as frantic as you want it to be. But, um, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. The reason I mentioned the cutoff is I was kind of thinking anyone who's not been on for seven weeks, I'm going to ask them just to remind who they are. And yours was 48 days because I think it was the New Year's Day. And I'm like, no, I'm not having that. You're going to have to go through it again. Especially oh, really? As, yeah, well, you're just slow. You've got to tell everyone. You've got to plug it. So go on. Tell um, us everyone. And I'm punishing you for that, that impression. For that impression. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, so, uh, yep, I'm Claire. I am the uh, Sutton United Supporter Liaison Officer. Um, I've been a fan for... Yeah, probably coming up to 30 years, uh, like Paul came uh, once and then never left. Uh, um, most people probably know my eldest brother, who's our photographer, sits on the side of the pitch, snapping away. Um, and yeah, came to a game with uh, him and my dad, my other brother, Dave, and uh, never really left. And now find myself uh, doing things behind the scenes as well, um, which is uh a wonderful privilege. So um, I am your fan representative um, on the senior management team. So if you ever have anything you want to discuss about your 
match day experience or just your interactions with the club. Um, I'm your girl, so, uh, seek me out. And um, I can't promise to solve all your problems, uh, but I will listen and uh, definitely feed stuff back to people. So that's me. Perfect. And finally for today, um, it's Joe. Now, Joe, you were only on two weeks ago, so you get to escape the whole who thank are you. Um, I think I thanked you did last time. <laughs> more than welcome. But how have you been? I'm very young right now. Because three people have been here for 30 years and I've been here for a, a, long month, long. a year. So <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't have much of a story to tell. I, I found it via FIFA and it doesn't seem very no. like a no. long, lovely story. No. I went to Barcelona. I went to Barcelona, which was nice. Yeah, I went. Um, I went with my um, my school um, on a singing trip, which was very nice last weekend. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, lots of studying, stuff. but obviously you guys. Need to know that, yeah, I've been good. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say you you get to tell the story in thirty years' time of how you started. Oh, exactly. Will I be presenting? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> he won't be able to master the technology to do a podcast in 30 years' time, Joe. Oh, what, <laughs> I'll, I'll, be be I'll be doing the impression. <laughs> yeah. Hello, my name's Mike. <laughs> right, and that was a wrap of the show. Goodbye. <laughs> um, right, so before we get into the match, we, we're going to chat about a couple of things. There's some cup news. Um, I didn't really understand this, but um, Ross has tried to explain it to me. Um, the academy side has moved into the uh, Merit League One. Um, so I sort of said, Can you explain that? And he said, Yeah, we finished in the top five, so now we're going playing another league with other top five teams like Portsmouth and so on. Um, I think he thought I knew a bit more than I than I did. But it's all good news. So the Academy team's doing really, really well. Um, ladies team, brilliant win today. Um, they won five nil and hopefully should be back at Gander Green Lane next Saturday, Sunday. Um, I think it's against Enfield, which is one of the teams in the relegation spots. I can't remember. But basically, they're diff- no, it's they're not actually. Um, but next Saturday, Sunday, Gander Green Lane, um, please come along. Uh, if there is any changes, check, check on the site. It should be because there's no men's team fixture next week. And now, um, the bit that I know you've all been desperate for and desperately waiting, it's all anyone talks to you about, um, it's the Ultimate 11. The Sutton United Talk Time and Podcast Ultimate 11. So I have to make sure that's that because it's not the best team. It's your favourite player for whatever reason. And um, we're going to talk in a second. We're going to start with Joe. Um, but first of all, um, got to do the jingle. Mustn't forget the jingle. And now. 125 years in the making. The Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. Sutton United All Time Ultimate 11. Okay, so either Claire's got some great ones or she's forgotten completely. I completely uh, forgot. So I'm, <laughs> I'm scribbling and I'll give you okay. a couple, but I'm not giving you a full. Uh... Okay, so Joe, I'm going to start with you because you've got less of a pool of players to choose from. So the first one, Joe, is the left wing or left knee. It doesn't have to be left wing, it be left knee. Right, okay, so, so I did a bit of research and the research was of. Of I'm going off right now because, like, whenever, whenever, whenever I looked up left mids for Sutton, I just got the current squad, squad. and then when I looked up left mids for Sutton over the last yeah. five years, it just said midfield. What? So I'm, I'm going to go for Will Randall because, um, mm-hmm. from what uh, he's been here for a few years, um, obviously, he scored. I saw a goal he scored against Ball Wood. I think it was amazing when I look back on it, but um, um and he's the uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, he's the. My Sutton shirt I got for my birthday last year, the first Sutton shirt I got. Excellent. Right, round 11, I just thought, you know what? Why not go around? Go for that, perfect. Um, Claire, do you want to go next or do you want Paul to go? I think Paul should go. I I'm not. Paul. I'm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, ladies first. I just, I just think um, my list is going to be very minimal because I'm terrible and I forgot to do my homework, for which I can only apologise. Um, I mean, if I'm just going for generic, can I just go generic midfield? As long as I can play on the left. I mean, to be fair, Steve, Steve chose Will Randall to go on the right last week, so I don't think it really makes any difference. Uh, I mean, um, I think Chalmers knows that I'm going to pick Ugg in the midfield um, because that goes without saying. Because. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because you he, fancied him. Yeah, he, he was my massive teenage crush. So I'm putting Paul Honey in every single uh, option there. Here we go. Okay. I look forward to the comments on that. Um, <laughs> I, I absolutely die of shame if he ever sees this or hears this or, you know, Bolty tells him probably. I don't know. <laughs> um, and Charles, who are you going to go for? So I 
do find that I struggle a bit. I, I remember wingers, mm-hmm. um, but remembering which wing they played on, you know. Um, I saw, I had a quick nose through the forum and where they were talking about things and a player, Matt Hand came up and that, that was a name oh, I'd completely forgotten good. about, but he was a tricky little player. He was he? really good. Um, but the one I think I'm going to go for, and I think he played on the left, I could be wrong, I was going to go with Simon Quayle. That's going, going back a few years. Uh, he was he was about in sort of cup run in the mid nineties. Um, Notts County scored against Notts County. Wrigley scored for us. Tricky player. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with Simon Quayle. Okay, no problem. And for striker, we're going to choose one of the strikers today as well. So Joe, who who are you going to go for as a striker? Um, I've, got, I've got a bit of a story, which feels odd to me. Um, Paul, first, first game of the season earlier this year. Um, I knew, no, but I was a bit nervous to say. Behind me, because we, we were sitting, I think we were, we were sitting in the stand, and behind us to the right. But it was, but I was a bit nervous because if I got it wrong, and I wanted to get picked with him. Tope Fadahunzi was like right there, and I didn't know if it was him. I've seen him play against Bromley or something. If that's if, if that's not him, and I assume it's him. <laughs> but then, 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 then I was like, you know what, go. And then um, just had a chat with him. Games, and he's just a really, it was great against Wimbledon, like playing with all the fans. He just seems like a really nice guy. Um, um, also, a very good player as well. But um, not gonna, it's not going to make the considering he's been six months, but you know, it's, it's an honorable mention. Perfect. You never know because if Claire books Paul Honey again, we could be in all sorts of trouble. Um, go on, Claire. Who's your okay? Who am I picking my striker? Um, uh, for completely different reasons um because they were very good um and maybe i had a crush on them paul but that's entirely different i'm going for matt fowler right yeah <laughs> wow i was not expecting that it's a blast from the past isn't it yeah okay. yeah it is yeah hat trick against carl shilton doesn't it yeah. i mean that was a cracking game wasn't it yeah in the in the six nil yeah in the six nil yeah. which paul was... also scored in so there we go yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wow, there are a lot of players to choose from. Oh, I, no. I mean, if it, Mike was choosing, Lenny Dennis would be out of his mouth in second. But I didn't really see Lenny play. He, he was a bit for my time. I think he, I think he may have. Did he have a little comeback, Lenny? I'm trying to remember. Comeback? I can't no. remember. No. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But I didn't see Lenny play. I saw very little of Paul McKinnon play either. Mm-hmm. But it feels right. I should pick Paul McKinnon. I think. Um, I would love to, you know, I was thinking Dom Felton would be getting a shout because he was a tricky, great, very skillful player. And Nazim McCraw, we had him for such a short amount of time, but what a player he was as well. The, the tricks and he just tore Ellsbury apart that day when we were heading towards winning the title. Um, but I think I think I have to go with Paul McKinnon. I saw, okay. I saw, saw very little of him playing, but club record scorer, no one's got close to it since. I don't think we can not have him on the list. Okay, perfect. I'll put them out to everyone's votes and uh, we'll see what happens with Paul Honey on the left. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. I'm just nodding along knowingly like that. That That sounds like a good name, but (laughs) I I have no background to this whatsoever. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest um, when I start thinking of, of players I'm like oh yeah I like this one it's like literally always always the forwards because they're the ones mm-hmm. you remember um, mm-hmm. it's only when people mention someone you're like oh yeah oh but do you remember so and so and so and so as well so um, so it's been quite interesting you're lucky you didn't ask me for a goalkeeper to be honest because I was going to go completely uh, outside of the box and say Vaggy just purely on that one appearance that he put in uh, for us uh, against Eastbourne. So oh, the, story, the story behind it was great as well, though, wasn't it? I think he yeah. got a phone call on the Thursday or the Friday. It's like from John or Tony, and he's like, "We haven't got a goalkeeper. Can you play?" <laughs> that's, that's what's going to happen. Is as we can move along, we're building the eleven now. And then as we go along each week, you guys can say, right, actually, I want to change this person for this person and so on and so on. And then that's where the votes are going to come in. Can you clarify in today's spiel that I didn't do my homework and I just picked a name at random? Yeah. <laughs> People are coming to me going, what are these names all about? And it's like, I didn't pick any of them. So let's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, but anyway, let's talk about the match. How, how did we feel there? I mean, let's go, let's start, let's start. Line up. No Rob, not even on the bench. Um, still no Louis. Um, some donut completely forgot that Omar was suspended, so he stuck him in his 11th. Um, and then at like five past two, went, 
Oh yeah. Um, but what were you feeling at, 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 at sort of as the lineup was announced? We'll start with you, Paul. Yeah, um, I thought it was pretty solid. Sam Hart has uh, been playing very well at left back, mm-hmm. so um, no problems with Sam being in there at all. Um, obviously, Eastley was missing, um, and Harry hasn't played a huge amount lately. Uh, so he's, I wouldn't say he's match fit quite quite there yet. So I was a little bit concerned that we could be overrun a little bit in midfield. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, I had, I had no problems really. You know, Kobe and uh, and and um, I was going to say Jason, Kobe and Ben uh, work well together. So <laughs> so yeah, I was I was happy. I was pretty happy. Perfect. And Joe, what were your thoughts at the start? Um, very similar. Uh, so I'm happy to see Lee Angle start because he was great against the whole game on. He, he, he took shots, um, which is something we've it's really nice to see him actually, like, especially where yeah. we, we've often tried to put it back in the box. Or... Um, I had similar worries about match fitness, not for Harry, but for Kobe, because obviously Kobe's just come back from injury, just, you know, through, I want to say, Hartley, Swindon, and um, yesterday. From injury, that's quite a lot of games in. Oh, just coming back from it, but... He might not play against Hartley, but he definitely played against yeah. Swindon. Yeah, I don't think um, he's in against... No, but, you know, it's just, that was my only thing, but obviously, considering how well he came in at the start of the season, I wasn't thinking that was pretty good. But if if because Rob's been out and Rob's been so ever present, I think that he's and he's given us any direction going forward. He's very anonymous yesterday. Of, okay, so. Yeah, I was quite, I was looking. Clearly, you're going to get a double. So you, if, if you had any thoughts in the lineup, but um, as Joe mentioned, the first little bit of the first half, it did look like we were struggling. As Paul said, Harry made him match mm-hmm. fitness. Kobe made him match fitness. But then Matt kind of said afterwards, no, no, it wasn't any of that. It was I got it completely yeah. horribly wrong. Um, so what were you kind of thinking? Oh, Line the first, first 20 minutes. I mean, the first 20 minutes, you just kind of were a bit like, oh, this doesn't, it didn't feel, it didn't feel good. I think because I kind of uh, went in with my usual pessimism, despite kind of the buoyancy of Tuesday night being a bit like, oh, I'd be happy with a, I'd be happy with a draw here. And then I felt a bit like, oh, like, this is not, not quite how I thought it was going to get started. Felt a bit slow. Uh, they definitely had the better of us. Um I think it was really actually if listening to Matt's interview afterwards, it's really illuminating and it's it takes a it takes a big man to turn around and say, like, no, actually I just completely got it wrong and we changed it up and it clearly worked. Um so it's it's good to see that some you know, that the prep goes in and doesn't always work, but you can, you know, change it up and get get back into it. I think once those kind of first twenty minutes were were over, it started to feel a little bit more promising. But um I was a little concerned to start with. Oh, yeah, so we, we did, as Claire was saying, we just came, started to come back into it. Um, and I think I mean, you were next to me, so we were watching it, and it, they did have a lot of the ball. Um, yeah. I think one of their fans on Twitter described it as all, all fart and no poo, which creased, <laughs> creased me up. It was like, well, you know exactly what the man means. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we were saying they were cutting us open, but they weren't actually creating. I don't remember Jack making it. A lot of saves if he did make any, and their yeah. keeper did make a few a few saves um, coming up to half time, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. No, I thought they were they were they had so much of the ball as I say early, and when it did change, when Matt changed it round, you could see. I, I mean, I didn't really realise what the changes were, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> but um, I uh, after that twenty minutes, it certainly sure we shored up and we were a bit more solid. And and we got much more into the game, and yeah, we certainly had a couple of chances. We certainly ended the half on the high, I think. And um, yeah, I I was I was hopeful for the second half. What I said to a few people was there was a few six out of tens out there, um, mm. sort of at the start, if you like, you know. Um, but yeah, from then on, um, we 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 I think we got everything we deserve, to be honest with you. Yeah, and were you were you you watch it from the opposite side of the pitch to us, Joe? Were you similar mindset that? Hopefully, half time, um, Matt's going to sort it all out. Yeah, I agree. First twenty minutes, I think that they're not really threatening around like our bot. I think they are half and kind of playing around the back and getting into the wing backs, and then they come forward a lot. And then that looked always, they were always not they weren't menacing. They were just always there. So it, I, I felt that we were never really at risk of conceding. I don't know. If it's on, I don't think we're going to concede before half time. I just think they will put pressure on us. But I never, they never really kind of threatened Jack, as you said. Um, I did think that the wingers, Natalie, like, I forgot they were playing. Um, especially, Literally, like, we'll cut in a few times, but I got until like the midpoint second half that they were on the pitch. And I was like, I would play. Annie and Harry were literally playing everything. They were 
attacking tackle. It's Tim that they were, that it was the defensive midfield. Field. And then the wingers just weren't factoring the game. And I don't know whether that was a very different formation at the back. And it was just different like that. Um, but, you know, it's at half time. The, I think the only thing that I'd say was just bring in the wingers. But, you know, the what they've been looking for because we've seen it multiple times. Yeah. So, so Claire, we were obviously hoping that Matt sorted it out at half time, full of the second half, with a little bit of enthusiasm. And then they nearly score. Within seconds, <laughs> Kobe again talking about people being big enough. Kobe got a lot of praise for blocking the ball, and then he went, "Yeah, well, I was only making up for my own mistake, so <laughs> it's only right that I do it." Um, but what were you? How were you feeling then? Because uh, it weren't great at that point. No, I, I, I feel like it. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't the best, was it? But the, but I think um, it's in, it's been interesting reading loads of their comments. Uh, like you say, some of the stuff on Twitter. Um, I uh, my attention was drawn to their forum as well. Uh, some of the comments on there. It's really interesting about how how they think we play um, or how we come across to other people. It was quite illuminating. Um, I didn't. I, I feel a bit like Joe. I mean, whilst I didn't necessarily think we were going to concede, there was there was just these moments of like, oh, that was close. But I never really felt like it was going to go anywhere. Um, and then once we'd scored. Um, it was it was just like a different it almost felt like a completely different team and the winds had changed and it was like oh there's a little bit of buoyancy here and actually it felt like a bit like after that kind of that first goal on Tuesday of like oh here we go we go we're going for the win this time um and and off we went so I do I, sometimes I just think we just we need to catch ourselves our, like a little bit and then it like you know the momentum comes back in we remind almost it's almost like they forget what they can do and then suddenly the the switch flips and they're like oh yeah and off we go yeah um yeah you mentioned the goal uh, Chalmers kind of we were right there and um what was quite amusing is that their guy was trying to wrestle with Ben for some bizarre reason <laughs> and um trying to win the ball and then in the end uh, ended up dropping to the floor and Ben had literally no one to attack the header beautifully across goal with Kobe who more than made up for his little mistake <laughs> by scoring another goal um how were we feeling at that point? Well, I know how you were feeling. You sound mixed. <laughs> Tell everyone else how you were feeling. Yeah, I mean, we we were we were bright, you know. We we were we were buzzing about, and we, as you say, come out the second half looking different, uh, looking lively. We um, deserved. We certainly deserved that win. Um, we 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 battled. You know, we were battle inside, aren't we? And we'll we'll give it our all. And I don't think we ever looked like we were gonna lose that game it felt to me um the second goal you're always wary something might go wrong you know pessimist myself as well um but I, yeah i just felt that we were in control and they they weren't doing much a bit like a bit like the fart and poo comment they, they weren't <laughs> doing a lot really and um i don't think they ever really troubled us not massively so, Joe, this is what supporting Sutton for over 30 years does to you. You look at everything pessimistic. <laughs> and just the three of us are so jaded. <laughs> yeah. You're 3-0 up. You, uh, you yeah. think it, it's, it's just us. It's not. Don't worry. Um, but you, you mentioned the wingers. Um, what was quite funny is, obviously, we don't know what goes on in that dressing room. We're all, we're all experts. We don't really know what we're talking about. Um, and at some point in the second half, you could hear Max screeching to Will to make it more narrow. So obviously we're sitting here going, well, no, why is Will not, why, why are the wingers not going wide and stretching them? And, and Matt's instruction was clearly narrow, narrow, narrow. Um, and, and Steve and I were like, I wouldn't have said that's the right thing to do, but obviously we're paying to watch football, not being paid to, to manage football teams. So um, that's the big difference. But how how were you kind of feeling at, at, at the, the one nil? I mean, they made a sub um, for someone who clearly could launch the ball. Um, were you st- were you starting to worry at that point, or were you still calm for that point? Well, pessimism is going to come in here. Um, <laughs> I wasn't uh, particularly worried. I, I kind of agree with what Paul said. I was. That's one of the most satisfying wins I think we had this season. Such a performance of two halves, and the way that from like that fourth, it was such a nice performance to watch. Because like, apart from the moment where. Uh, they fired over like and Jack had no chance. But they, they I just enjoyed watching. I did, and maybe that's because. because I haven't seen enough to be worried, but <laughs> I just kind of, I felt very at ease. Uh, I did think, I, did, I do like the way that we don't just use substitutes for the point of using substitutes and fresh legs, because I think the way we're playing in 60 minutes, there's no need for us to be playing substitutes. If anything, if, if, if in the 60th minute, then we and I would 
the way they just we really freshened up that top because to be honest to be honest uh, during the league events of rag yesterday they were all over everywhere like he kind of played over a bit but he won a lot and then lee was taking shots it was really good to see and then i just thought uh, it was just a really really win i think that, that kind of we're, 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 we've only lost, lost once 17 we've got the best form in the league now because someone's the toughest because they've lost a stop ball uh I really can say I think that kind of yesterday's win summed that all up in a sense because I think it was kind of shows we've now got the depth and we've got the quality to switch it on if we needed to. And we kind of showed that against a team who quality to go up. They've got the depth. But and they, they showed it. They showed it plus two was ridiculous two. in August. So I guess I was more just enjoying it. But I feel like that could be <laughs> it's gonna hit me at some point where I'm gonna be really nervous. nervous. And I'll come on and be like, Oh my my <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we did have another nice little moment where their keeper went down injured, which I think it was. It might have been a clash of heads, and their their defenders tried to take the, the free kick really, really quickly, whilst the keeper was laying down. And then both those guys who tried to take the free kick really, really quickly had very long and detailed discussions with the referee about exactly what happened. But they weren't bothered about what had happened five, five seconds before when they were trying to take the free kick. Um, so that was that was amusing. But who wants who wants to go for that pass? Who wants to talk about that pass? Ali's pass. I don't no mind one? you. Cool. Go, <laughs> go for it. I mean, yeah, defence splitting. They were they were pushing a little bit, weren't they? They were pushing to try and get something. Um, but what a great ball. Dave, great pace. Um, that sort of ball through for him was perfect. Perfect weight. And he's he's got through, had so much time to pick his, pick his spot. Uh, and, yeah, slotted it in. Game, set and match, sorted. Yeah. Really good, really good. Beautiful counter attack, Claire. Claire, mm. what were you? I, I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't say any more than Charmus, to be honest. I just think that the most poetic thing of it was, um, as Joe alluded to, the uh, the miserable nature in which we lost to them at the beginning of the season. Um, and that was a real stinger. And the journey home was was tough uh, after that one. And it felt, yeah, it was a little bit of a, a poetic justice moment there. I felt really like... Uh, somewhat smugly satisfied uh, because of it Um, because I think last year last season like you know coming home from defeats didn't feel as bad because I was still in this little like (laughs) we're in the EFL bubble and every time like we lost I just kind of thought to myself yeah but we're in the football league like (laughs) this is ridiculous can't be too sad whereas like that hurt Um, but yeah it just felt felt good and uh, it's always nice when your uh, your Apple watch tells you that the uh, the sound has gone well over a hundred decibels, <laughs> and you need to calm calling, yeah. down. <laughs> we're calling an ambulance. Right. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start to, to move on. I mean, we're up to ninth, um, which is mad. Um, but obviously, with with the uh, pessimist head, um, if all the teams below us win their games in hand, I think we're twelfth or thirteenth. But that would require Grimsby winning three and Walsall no Walsall winning three and Grimsby winning four. So it's um, hopefully unlikely to score. Um, but bad planning because there's three of you, which means I'm going to have to put a choice in as well. Um, player of the day. So I will have, give you a second to start thinking about it. And we'll start with Claire. He's struggling. Now watch me do my dance. I'm the player of the day. day, day. Go on, Claire. Who's uh, your I'm going for David Adjaboy. Perfect. Chalmers? I'm going to go with Lee Ango. I think he, uh, he's, he's looked good whenever I've seen him. Uh, and um, he brings something different to us up front. I'm just going to say I had Lee on my list, but purely because of the fun about the substitution, because I think he went over to the bench expecting to be substituted on the 65th minute. Yeah. And then again, when they put they put their subs board up at th- number 33, he went trotting over and it was like, no, that's their sub, Lee, get back on. <laughs> um, that, that creased me up a bit. Um, and Joe, who's your fault? Um, you guys have taken mine. So, um, my, oh, come my on. third choice. I feel bad with my third choice. Worthy contender. Um, um, Joe Kizzy. Um, was kind of... Joe Kizzy? Putting balls every single like minute. So maybe. Perfect. Well, I'm going to go with Kobe because um, I thought he was immense and I watched a bit of the back back today and there was just a part of the second half where he, he became like then with the magnet, the ball just literally was bouncing off his head everywhere. Knock out. It was attracted to his head and he was knocking it forward. Um, and I think he... He, they put us under a bit of pressure and he did a big clearance which took the ball out to someone on the wing who then passed it into Ali who then managed to do that pass. He's got an assist to the assist to the assist. That, that counts. That's something. Um, 
But that's it. I'll put that vote out as well. Um, but we are running a little bit later than I expected, and we're going to start with the preview for the Newport County, um, which is on Saturday. Now, they've got a game in between hand, uh, but joining us now from the 1912 Exiles, because I'm still haunted by the very first time that he was on the show, and I called him the 18. Um, <laughs> but we've got Ed, who knows all about fourth division football and how wonderful it is, and I'm sure he's delighted to have such an optimistic person on the show like Joe as well. <laughs> Hello, Ed. How are you? <laughs> How are we all? Everyone okay? Yes, very well, thank you. <laughs> good, good. How's it been for you this season so far? Oh my God, how has it been this season for us? Um, I mean, we it's always a roller coaster uh, with County and um, this year has been no exception. So uh, if you cast your minds back to when it wasn't drizzly and cold outside, back in, not even August, back in July, wasn't it? When we had the first, first match of the season in glorious sunshine um and you know at that point we played Sutton and I think came away from the game at your place feeling relatively optimistic you know we felt like we had this exciting young manager in James Robry um and he brought in you know a a lot of players uh, and was talking about playing really scintillating exciting football um and it just kind of never quite happened we we never really lived up to the second half of last season that we had under him so he left the club in uh, in october with us looking very out of sorts uh, on, on on a very poor run of form it has to be said um and that was a difficult decision for the club because he you know he's a newport boy um he he wanted to do things the right way he talked a good game the fans loved him but it it, it wasn't working um and we were really not quite in a death spiral, but there was a real um, gloom around the place. And so uh, the board prioritised bringing in a kind of pragmatic, experienced fourth division manager. Uh, enter stage left, Graham Coughlin, a.k.a. Coco, uh, who has come in, the, you know, formerly at Bristol Rovers and Mansfield, and has kind of steadied the ship um, for a good few months under his tenure we basically just said, right, let's let's just go back to basics, make ourselves difficult to beat. Um, it, we were not great to watch. We would, you know, try and sneak a goal and then kick it into the corners. Um, but it worked and we managed to solidify a little bit. Um, and then since January, we've kind of kicked on. And I was just looking. And in the last five games, um, w- you know, we're right up there with you in terms of form, but also we've actually played a lot of the same teams. We both have played uh, Swindon and Stevenage. Um, we play Hartlepool's midweek, who I know you've not long uh, played against. So coming into next Saturday's game, both of us will have been on a good run of form against broadly similar teams. So something's got to give at Rodney Parade on Saturday. I don't know uh, what we'll give, but um, yeah, we, it feels as though we're now, we pulled ourselves out of the, the mire. There's a nice gap between us and the three at the bottom. Um, and I think we're expecting that we'll finish the table, uh, finish the season comfortably mid-table. But um, yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, but I think, yeah, people are much happier. And we've, we, we've become much more entertaining to watch as well. So um, yeah, I think the mood is generally quite good in South Wales. Now. We remember that match <laughs> very much because uh, it absolutely ruined our season. Because uh, <laughs> no, no fault for you guys, obviously. But um, Ben Goodliff injured himself and was out for ages. Um, for me, it was a bit weird because I had to turn up late and I um, because someone had planned a party. Um, um, but um, you basically, <laughs> no, it was not me. All right, your wife. <laughs> I mean, in, fa- in fairness, I, I, I'm over it, obviously, but in fairness, as was pointed out, when does the football season start in July? <laughs> so, so, okay, all right, fair enough. Um, but I turned up late and the match was still, it, it, I think the first half had only just ended and I couldn't work it out. And people say, no, there was a really, um, and that, that kind of started a terrible run for us with injuries and, and whatnot. But we're we're over that now. Um, but where you were sitting there describing the, the terrible football, kicking, scoring, and taking it to the corners, that sounds lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what we look for. <laughs> uh, but who, who we? I mean, you may well have seen, you may not have seen, you've probably heard us. But when we spoke last time, we just sold David Adjaboy. Mm-hmm. And we've got him back. Unloaded, yes. <laughs> um, and and I see he's been in in a rich vein of form for you again. I mean, he is the the one Sutton player who um, I always immediately worry about because he's such a a live wire, and he's certainly the man I think to watch on Saturday. It'll be a good test for our defence um, to see how they how they get on marking him. So that's that's a worry. Um, the one thing I will say about County, you know, we have. Uh, 
improved significantly over the last few months. I still worry when we go behind in games. If we go into the leading games, we tend to be quite good then at uh, you know closing it out. Um, bizarrely, we went behind twice against Stevenage and still emerged with a point. Um, but generally speaking, we we struggle a little bit when coming from behind in games. So first get first goal on Saturday is going to be really really important. Um, we won't be helped by the fact that uh, we will have played Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, um, and then Saturday again. So we've got a midweek game against Hartlepool's that was a postponement from earlier in the season. Um, so our players are already looking pretty kind of dead on their feet. And I think come Saturday, we'll be rotating the squad again. So you may find that it's, although it's a bad time to be playing us in terms of our form, it's quite a good time to be playing us just in terms of sheer volume of games. You know, we, we, we probably... Um, are going to have to rotate again come come Saturday, and particularly I think up top that may mean that um, yeah we we don't have quite the bite that we would want against you. So Joe, what what are your thoughts? I mean, it's going to be win ninth. I don't think any of the midweek games can affect that. Um, Newport, I think the nineteenth, but they could be as high as sixteenth depending on how results go. Um, but what what are your thoughts on on? I all right. This is the the pessimism is going. To... Because yeah, we played through July, um, we were. I don't think we were lucky for. I think a draw was the right outcome, but it wasn't. It wasn't a classic. I don't, we, you, were, you were quite good at just playing in the nicest possible way. That very traditional, and you just built. We didn't have the ball. And I think when we didn't have the ball a lot, we sometimes switch off. Um, and that's my worry that when you go ahead, you play quite well. I'm worried that if uh, if you play the similar. Early, early, then that could be a bit of a problem. But then I think when we go behind, I think unless we kind of really like back up our ideas, like if we play like came back, we play really well, then that's fine. But then I'm also worried that we could just a one nil win could occur. Then again, if we score first, first could go quite well. I think it could be for two. Oh, I don't want to say three because you don't want to play, but a two nil win maybe. Um, I just I think. <laughs> I don't really like to say it's a bit of an odd game because I think I don't think you're warranted to be in 19. I think because I I I went and saw oh, I went saw your way during the season. I can't remember who's against, but you guys were good and I think you drew. I want to say, um, but no, you've put. I would say you were somewhere near London. Um, but you were you were good and I'm worried that we might just not quite have the game. I think the games will help us. I will. And keep that slight like optimism that we will win, but I think it could just as easily be a one draw. I don't really know what to say here. I'm kind of hoping it's, someone it's, else. It's, will it's really it, really so. hard when you've got when when you've got two teams who are on such a good run as we're both on. We're both become. I mean, assuming that we don't lose at Hartlepool's, which is isn't a given, but you know, we will probably both be coming into this um, unbeaten in five. You would imagine, um, and then it's yeah, it's kind of lap of the gods a little bit, um, and I think it will be a, an interesting kind of matchup of. Um, of style um, we're, we're slightly less like possession based as when we played you at the start of the season um, we are more direct more punchy now you know we we do when we have possession we try and do something quickly with it whereas under Robry we were very much it, it was like that Simpsons episode you know get the ball hold it hold it you know there was a lot of that going on whereas now it's like right if we get the ball get it to midfield get it to the front too you know that it's fairly um, yeah it's fairly direct um, and that probably plays the strengths of the, the, the players that we got. Yeah, it was um, against Leighton Orient. Um, oh, OK. Because they had, they yeah, had about yeah, like yeah. 30 shots. Yep. 21 yep. shots and 25 shots. You had about three. And I remember that the, the second half... Yeah, we, we are their bogey team. Yeah. Yeah, you just kind of blocked... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we have the hex over Orient. It doesn't matter how many points they're clear at the top of the table, we will always go there and manage to take something off them. It's just it's just one of those weird, weird things. Um, I don't think we've got any kind of similar vibe against Sutton, although um, I was saying to my uh, seven-year-old just before I came on, I said, oh, we've got Sutton next Saturday. And he said, oh, I hate Sutton. And I went, why? No one hates Sutton. They're like the most <laughs> benign team in the division. And apparently, according to my seven-year-old, seven -year he hates Sutton because you're show-offs. So I don't know what that means. I couldn't get any more out of him, but he's starting wow. a beef with you. So there you go. Wow. Well, I like you. Are we yeah. allowed to start beef with a seven-year-old? Yeah, go. No. Yeah, cool. do what you like. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if they, if, if they schedule a party on the opening day of the season, then yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> She's only five. She's yeah. five. It's all right. She's five. <laughs> um, Claire, how do you see it going? Um, I possibly going to sit on the fence just as much as Joe. Really, I think when you've got two teams that are in such good form, like Ed says, 
it can either make for a really exciting match because you both come into it really up for it and want to kind of take something from it, or it goes completely the other way and it just becomes this bit of like a damp squib kind of thing, doesn't it? And it'll be a nil-nil draw and we'll all be very bored by the end of it. Um, But um, I'd like to say that we're going to just slightly clinch it. There we go. One nil. Here's a better question. Mm. Not what you think will happen, but would Sutton take a point from it? Because when we had Stevenage uh, midweek last week, um, they went ahead, we equalised. They went ahead, we equalised. But there was kind of just a feeling in the second half that probably a point suited both teams quite well. It kept our run going. It kept, kind of kept their run going a little bit. I just wonder whether there might be something similar against Sutton that for you guys, a point on the road isn't isn't a bad result. It's another point for us that moves us towards mid-table. Is it going to be one of those games where on 60 minutes, both teams are like, should we just have a bit of a non-aggression pact here? <laughs> I think there's probably an element of that, isn't there? But I'm going to say what I think Mike's thinking. We only need three to get to that magic 50. So I'd like three, please. Uh, <laughs> although last, last year when we got really close to the magic 50, it took us for ages and I think we drew and drew and drew and started doing that. But yeah, Paul, I mean, Matt always says respect the point on the road. Um, I know one of the people in the forum hates the phrase of would you take a draw now? Um, <laughs> but would you? Yeah, I'd take a point, trip. I think. I think I'd be happy with the point. And if we get three, it's a bonus. Um, it's saying, it's saying, you know, Hartlepool away on a Tuesday night is going to be tough. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to get a decent night's sleep Wednesday night, are you? <laughs> a Tuesday night, sorry. And it's going to, it could affect the, the game for them, you know? So if we sneak it, if we sneak it and get, claim all three, I'm not going to say no, but yeah, I think I think it could be a close affair and, and we'll, we'll take a point if we had to. Perfect. Right, before we wrap up this segment, there is still one really, really important question for Ed um, and um, I know it's a question close to everyone's heart. Um, what is the pub everyone should go to? It's pub uh-huh. of the week time. Right, do you know what? I'm, I'm feeling gentle. <laughs> Dear God. I told you it got better. <laughs> what about it, didn't he? You have too much fun <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to be generous because, uh, unlike my son, uh, I, I like Sutton as a club. So I'm, I'm going to give you not just one pub, but two good pubs to go to. And they're opposite each other. So if you head to the high street in Newport, um, you've got the best of both worlds, right? So on the one side of the street, you've got um, Tiny Rebel, which is a, um, a local Newport-based brewery. Um, great range of... Um, you know, proper, interesting beers, um, nice food, very modern. And over the road from that, you have this sort of mock Tudor type effect place called uh, Ye Old Marenga House, which is a, a Sam Smith's pub. And I love Sam Smith's pubs. They're always, the beer's always nice, good vibe in them um, and run by lovely people. So you've got those two over the road from each other. So you either want to go to the Marenga or you want to go to Tiny Rebel, but they're both lovely and um, you will do well. Perfect. And I forgot to mention, we didn't actually do a proper shout out for your, for your podcast. Um, when's the Sutton preview? Like, I don't know. Um, we've we've done loads of uh, of stuff recently. I think we haven't worked out whether we're going to do a specific Sutton preview or whether we'll kind of tie it in with if we do something after Hartlepool's on Tuesday night. Midweek away games always like screw us over because we're always like trying to find someone who can give us a review of the game if we're not not at it. And our usual northern correspondent is uh, as well as Holly Bobsick. So. Um, yeah, so if we don't do a full preview episode, then I might just uh, do a Twitter thread of some of the things I've learned from this discussion. So, uh, yeah, we will tag you in that. <laughs> they sit on the fence. That could be a short thread, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, perfect. OK, we will wrap it up there. I've kept you all much longer than I expected. I, I say that every time I talk on the show. Um, but thanks a lot to everyone for your time. Um, thanks for this, everyone to listen. Um, don't forget you can subscribe, uh, like, follow, share, comment on all the socials. That's something podcast. And um, we will see you soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. United! 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 United!